Okay, so this is the last topic. We're just gonna talk about autoimmunity and the lymphatic system very briefly. Um, I put another diagram of the lymphatic system up to the right. Uh, and you can see how extensive it is. It's a pretty, pretty extensive network. Um, you can see how it gets thicker and thinner at different parts of the body. And you see those little dots everywhere. Those are all of the lymph nodes. Um, I think humans have like five to 600 lymph nodes throughout their entire body. So it's definitely just more than the ones that we can see visibly, you know, on our, on our neck and by our chest. Um, so autoimmunity, a healthy functioning immune system will not target proteins and cells that are not foreign. So this is called tolerance. Our ability to not target our own cells is called tolerance. Often the negative selection that is supposed to occur for B cells and T cells does not, and self-reactive cells remain in the body. So that is for autoimmunity we're talking about. The negative selection is what we just talked about, where any cell that reacts with its own, with one of our own self cells, gets eliminated. In autoimmunity, that does not happen, and B and T cells will react against like the host cells, against our own cells. B cells will undergo negative selection in the bone marrow, just like T cells in the thymus, um, Self-reactive cells will either undergo apoptosis or will be released as energic cells. And energic cells are just unresponsive. It's just another way that the immune system shuts off the cell rather than um, destroying it or inducing apoptosis. T cells will also undergo negative selection in the thymus and lymph nodes in a very similar process. So negative selection also does occur in the lymph nodes, not to the extent that it does in the thymus, but it does occur. Um, some autoimmune diseases that may appear on the MCAT are type 1 diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, Graves' disease, myasthenia gravis, and uh, celiac disease. So if you're interested in those, you can definitely look them up on your own time. Um, type 1 diabetes is usually the one I think that comes up the most. Um, and then you'll see like other really rare diseases that'll come up. Like I've seen vitiligo um, on some of my studies, which is that um, autoimmune pigment disorder. Um, but yeah, they're, they're all pretty interesting, honestly. Uh, the lymphatic system. Um, and that's, that's really all I, I had to say about, uh, autoimmunity. It's, there's not too much on it. It's basically, as long as you understand the concept, um, why it occurs, that's, that's pretty much the most important part. Um, I think if you have a general understanding of the immune system, then you should be able to understand what autoimmunity is and why it, why it happens and why it's not good. Um, so the lymphatic system, again, really quickly, is just the system in the body that circulates fluid. It is a one-way system, just like your circulatory system, um, and it acts as a suction pump to retrieve water and proteins and white blood cells from the tissues. So like we were talking about before, when histamine is released, it causes those capillaries to leak. So uh, we see white blood cells and proteins leak out into the cells, and then the water is going to follow them. Um, the lymph system, the lymphatic system drains the cells and it dumps the fluid back into the circulatory system and then acts as a suction pump. So we don't really have, it's not like a heart where we have the pump going. Um, so it's basically just smooth muscle contractions and valves. It's a, it has a valve system so that there's no backflow. Um, smooth muscle contraction will cause the fluid to move forward. And then the valves, the pressure will just pull, um, the fluid into the next chamber. And that's basically how uh, the lymphatic system is circulated throughout the body. And the fluid that is in the lymphatic system is called lymph, um, intuitively. Lymph nodes are spread throughout the body and help filter lymph. Um, so they're basically just dispersed throughout the lymphatic system. As you can see, um, even here to the left, these little, little dots that are through this orange, those are all lymph nodes. And those are all, this is the lymphatic system that's um, you know, coming up the core. Um, small lymphatic vessels uh, will merge into larger ducts, uh, which merge uh, into the thoracic duct into the chest. Thoracic duct is the largest lymphatic duct in the system, and it empties into large veins into the neck. So the lymphatic system, this is the point where the lymphatic system meets the circulatory system, because basically that's the job of the lymphatic system. I mean, obviously it's going to collect these proteins. You're going to pass lymph nodes, so it does serve an immune purpose as well. The lymph nodes will be able to filter anything that's in the lymph. And if there is something that is invading, um, they can mount an immune response. But uh, the lymphatic system is to get fluid out of the cells. Um, and it's to retrieve water, it gets proteins back and white blood cells, it dumps them back into the circulatory system, and it meets the circulatory system um, 
in those large veins in the neck. Um, so lymphatic vessels from the intestines also dump chylomicrons into the thoracic duct. So if you remember uh, from the digestive system, chylomicrons are basically um, these little tiny lipoproteins that carry fatty acids through, um, through your blood, basically, because these fatty acids are not hydrophilic, they are hydrophobic, so they have to be packaged before they go in. So these chylomicrons get dumped from the intestines, um, and the lymphatic vessels can pick them up and dump them back into the circulatory system. Um, that's how they get into the circulatory system. Okay, um, we just have one last question and that's it for the content. So which of the following statements is false? Uh, take a couple of minutes. Does anybody have any questions before we start this? You can unmute or type in the chat box. All right, so 100% of you said the correct answer, which is B. So which of the following statements is false? We can go through it. A healthy immune system is one with tolerance. That is correct. Like we just discussed before, tolerance is um, our immune system ability to ignore our, our natural cells. Um, it's the ability to not induce autoimmunity, only target foreign cells. So that is true. That would be true. Um, C is T cells that do not properly undergo negative selection and the thymus can go on to cause autoimmune damage, um, which is true because again, negative selection protects against autoimmune damage. Um, if we present in the thymus, if we present a T cell with uh, proteins that are commonly found in your finger and that T cell attaches to that, we're gonna destroy it that because of negative selection, we don't want an autoimmune response. So um, that's true. If they don't properly undergo negative selection, it's going to cause immune damage. Uh, T cells, okay, C uh, and D. There are hundreds of lymph nodes throughout the lymphatic system. That is true. Uh, I just said that like a minute or two ago, I think there's like five to 600 total in um, like a full grown adult in the lymphatic system. Um, but B, the lymphatic system empties into an artery in the chest is not correct. Uh, the lymphatic system empties into a vein in the chest, which is correct, uh, but it does not empty into arteries. It goes into veins first. Um, and that's really the only reason why B is, is incorrect. 